you. Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is lesson three in our online classes that Beyond Water is presenting to you. So today we're going to use a, a little bit of uh, difference between your country and the one that I'm from, which is Kenya. Kenya is one of the countries in East Africa that uh, Beyond Water works in. So let's have a look at it and uh, we'll discuss it soon. So for those who are in Australia, you have your population is about 25 million. Kenya it's nearly 45 million. So that is a huge difference just in itself. And I want you to remember that as we compare some things there. So your life expectancy is about 82.5 years of age, which is great. But in Kenya, it's about 20 years behind that. Why do you think that is? Well, I can tell you why. A lot of it is because we're in Kenya, and remember Kenya reflects lots of other East African countries that we work in. It's a lot more labor intensive. So in Australia, you won't see the um, people carrying uh, big trailers full of containers of water uh, and dragging those along or having to collect water or farming by hand. So it's very labour intensive, takes a toll on the body. Also, healthcare is another one. Uh, I know in Australia, if you get sick, uh, if you've got a Medicare card, it's all for free, but uh, you can go to hospital, you can go to a doctor and be seen to. In places like East Africa, you have to pay all the way. So when my husband Pete broke his leg on Mount Kilimanjaro, which is Africa's highest freestanding mountain, uh, we had to be carried down uh, about 15 hours down to the nearest hospital on a little stretcher, and uh, he had to pay all the way, he had broke his leg in two places, and then we had to medivac him out to another country to get medical care there. So um, it's, it's a little bit different, not necessarily ambulances or anything like that. So those type of things take a real toll on bodies. So the next thing we're going to look at is the difference in GDP. What does GDP mean? Gross domestic products. So if you don't know what that is by now, go and have a look at it. But in Australia, now remember Australia has a population of about 25 million. Kenya, 45 million. In Australia, the GDP is $1.3 trillion, while in Kenya, it's only $53 billion. So even though Kenya has a much larger population, its production and the money that it makes is much smaller. Next, let's take a look at the different types of religions. Australia has many religions, but there's some predominant ones. There's Christian, Protestant, Muslim, some other smaller ones, or none. There's about 30%, as you can see in this slide. But at Kenya, predominantly, uh, it has uh, some very few religions. So there's Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, and Indigenous. Indigenous are uh, those who have local beliefs, maybe ancestral worship, uh, believing in witchcraft, things like that. And I'm not talking about witchcraft as in a lady in black with a hat on and long nose uh, sitting on a stick flying around. No, no, no. It's about, um, it can be about curses and... Uh, and um, medical things that are based on how good your family is and things like that. So that's a bit of a difference. Let's look at languages now. In Australia, you, your main languages are English, Mandarin, Arabic, Cantonese, Vietnamese, and also sign language. Sign language is an international uh, language, believe it or not, and it should be too. Uh, but I know when I was growing up that you usually only know and are taught one language and when you go to school you have the option of learning another one. In Kenya though, all schooling is done in English, um, but predominantly the language is Swahili. So Swahili is spoken across about 14 different countries in Africa, but in Kenya alone there's 66 other languages. So most kids know English, Swahili and their mother tongue. So their mother tongue depends on where they come from and things like that. So really, they have an advantage over people like you and I who only learn one language. I just want to encourage you, uh, sometimes we mock people from other places who maybe their English isn't as good as ours, but you know what? They probably know more than one or two languages. Now wages. We had a look at what the uh, average wage per year in Australia is. It's about $86,000. Sounds a lot when you're young. Trust me, it's not. Uh, but in Kenya, it's only just over $1,200 per year. So there is a big difference. Now, yes, in places like Kenya, you can earn a lot of money uh, for top jobs, or if you're a CEO of a company or, or something big like that. You can't earn far more than that, of course. But this is just an average wage of a, of a person. So I thought I would look at politicians' wages. And there uh, isn't really that much of a difference when you look at how much money a country makes to what politicians earn. So in Australia, it's around the $350,000 mark. 
uh, which is quite good. But in Kenya, it's about $120,000. So these are both based in Australian dollars. But again, look at how uh, the poverty is so rich in East Africa and really what they're getting for it. And I just want to give you an example. Uh, one year, uh, the politicians, and about just over 300 politicians who sit in parliament in Kenya, and this again reflects other countries, um, they insisted on new chairs. So each chair was worth a thousand US dollars. So there's over 300. So that's $300,000 just spent on politicians' chairs just to sit in parliament. You wouldn't get that anywhere else. So another difference I want to have a look at is so our car is called Big Red. Big Red is a 2005 X-Trail. It's really, really good. And I thought I'd do a price comparison. So in Australia, I can buy one for two and a half thousand. In Kenya, it costs me nearly 13 and a half thousand Australian dollars. So even though it's the same vehicle, and that's because of import duties and things like that. So while people are earning less, it actually costs them more. Next, I look at, looked at a four bedroom house, how much to rent per month. That's what PM stands for. So in, in Brisbane, and I know it's different in every state, but in Brisbane it was just over $3,000 per month. In Kenya, the, exactly the same type of house is going to cost you $6,000 per month. Now, a lot of that has to do with the difference in dollars. So the Kenyan shilling is equivalent to the American dollar. So that does have an influence. So next we looked at school fees, and this was based on a Waldorf school. So, and that's pretty much standard all around the world. And again, in Kenya, it's twice the price of Australia. So that's just a little bit of the difference of economies in those countries. So here's three questions I want you to consider from today. As of right now, there are no toilets in your school. There's no water in the drinking fountains. You can't leave the school grounds. Your parents can't drop anything off. You can't even use the, the school toilets because obviously there's no water. You can't use the teacher's toilets because there's no water. It's the morning and you are busting to go to the toilet like you're going to explode. I want you to think of two options that you could have uh, to uh, you do something for using like a toilet. What would you do? That's the question. What would you do if you were stuck somewhere like school and uh, there's no toilets? What would you do? Number two, I want you to work out how much money you think you need each week to survive on. So that's rent, food, paying for your water, your electricity, clothes, any school fees. Find a figure. Discuss with your family how much you think you would need to live on. This is your third question. You are now a parent, even though you're a kid. You're a parent and you have to make the decision. You only earn $5 a day. And it's going to cost you $30 a term to have one of your kids in school. And you're a boy, so girls use your imagination. So boys can do other jobs to earn money, but girls not necessarily. So you have to make the decision, do I send my child to school? Or do I get them to do something like looking after the sheep or the goats? Or collecting water, looking after somebody's cattle? Something to bring extra money in. So I want you to decide, make a decision and why.